guys, Nick here from Just Feed Studios and welcome back to another video. I'm joined by Dylan. Hello. And uh, today we are going to be doing a spoiler Let's Talk for Avengers Endgame. I'm going to stress that heavily, spoiler Let's Talk. We're talking, we're talking about spoilers. If you've not seen the movie, please get in your car, go see it like this very Viewer second. discretion is advised. Viewer discretion is heavily advised <laughs> because like there are so many little moments of this movie that I feel like people wouldn't consider a spoiler, but you still need to experience. So go see it before even those little things can be spoiled for you. Exactly. So, yeah, from here on out, we're talking about spoilers. We're going to basically talk through the entire film, give our thoughts, and just break it down. So you have been warned. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, ready to get started? Mm-hmm. So basically, one of the first things that hit me in terms of, oh, so this is what this movie's going to be like, is before we even got the Marvel logo, we got that scene with Hawkeye and his family. Oh my goodness. This is one of the first movies where I've seen like in a full scene beginning to end before the logo. And it has such impact. Like looking at towards the film it's as a whole, that scene itself plays such a big role. And we knew it was going to happen, what happened in that scene. Like, yeah, exactly. As soon as it started, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I get what's about to happen and what they're doing. But then when it happened, you were still like kind of surprised. Even if you were prepared for it, it still caught you by surprise. Yeah, and it just, I also think a big part of that is Hawkeye's reaction. Just a, It wasn't like a, oh, shit, this went down. It's that confusion of, wait, where's, what's going on? where's my yeah. daughter? Which, that just really hit. Because, of course, we as the audience know what happened. Mm -hmm. And we as an audience, it just gets us back into that, that mindset of, oh, shit, that's right. That's how Infinity War ended. I forgot about that. Yeah, it was just, it, I think the scene was needed. It was a very mm -hmm. purposeful scene that I think was, it was well, it was well done. Yeah. And then we got the Marvel logo, which, interesting choice of music for that. Definitely. <laughs> I'm used to the kind of, you know, Marvel slash Avengers kind of scene playing there. So when yeah. it was that different music, I was like, where are we? And then we got to Tony and Nebula on the ship, mm -hmm. which they really jumped right into that first act. I was expecting more of a lead in, but it was just like, hey, Infinity War just happened here where all of our characters are. But which worked. I think, I mean, I don't think it needed as much like background to it as... It could, like, as some people might have thought. I think it worked well. Yeah, and it's re it really just played off of Endgame. Or not Endgame, Infinity War. Infinity War, Of yeah. the, like, we're assuming you saw Infinity War, and you know how it ends, so we're just picking up. Yeah, it's like, literally, like, if you were to watch them simultaneously and put, like, the, the whole five hours, five and a half hours all together, mm -hmm. it would just be one fluid movie. Yeah, exactly. Which I think it worked super well for, but... We get the scene with Tony Nebula, just kind of how dire the situation is. And then uh, Captain Marvel. Like, <laughs> out of that nowhere. Scene, that scene from the end of Captain Marvel where she shows up. Wait, at and the really, Avengers really base. quick about this yes, whole go ahead. Tony and Nebula scene. Go ahead. Can we point out how, like, fatigued and malnourished Tony is? Yes. Oh my god. And especially later on when we see him in the wheelchair. His arms are like twigs, and like there's a there's a scene where you see like the ship as a more wide angle, and you see him standing up in there, and he just looks so different off mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, that was a really really nice touch. But yeah, it's but, Captain Marvel. Yeah, and that scene from the post credit scene of Captain Marvel showing up at the Avengers base, being like, "Where is Fury?" Not in the movie. And I was like, "Oh wow, that that was a whole scene that they just shot to not be used." Yeah. I didn't expect that. Exactly. But, yeah, so Captain Marvel shows up and literally carries the ship to Earth. Yeah, exactly. Which, it's it segues Captain Marvel into uh, Endgame really nicely, I feel, considering the end mm -hmm. of Captain Marvel. Yeah, so. it does. Which, I'll say it was kind of a nice coincidence that, like, she got the buzz of, like, oh, Nick Fury needs me on Earth, flying to Earth, and, like, wait a second, there's wait, ships yeah. trying to here. And then Which, the ship happens to need to go to Earth, too. It's but. a suspension of disbelief thing that I totally uh -huh. buy into. I don't see it as a problem. It's just like a, oh, okay. Well, it's basically like, if you were to think of 
Tom Holland being Spider-Man, he's like, oh, I'm just going to school. And he's like, oh, I see some trouble. And it's like, yeah. he goes out of his way really quick to solve the trouble and go back. Like, it's mm-hmm. kind of the same thing. So I think it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, the Avengers are on Earth. And t- I didn't think Tony would have as much of a grudge of Civil War still, but he does. Which yeah. it, it felt right, especially because now he lost... Uh, why well, it's Peter Parker. Yeah. Peter Parker is now gone, and he sees it as like Cap wasn't there to help out. Which and that's is a really big lost. thing for him. And and losing uh, losing Holland was it was mentally draining on him. Yeah, and it also just I guess adds to that kind of perspective from Infinity War that everyone was kind of doing their own thing to stop Thanos. That like Captain or not. Well, Cap didn't know what was going on with Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, and Iron Man on Titan, just like Iron Man didn't know what was going on with Wakanda. So, of course, it kind of feels like, from Iron Man's perspective, Cap just wasn't there. Like, I think everyone, for that aspect alone, like, had their own guilt behind it. Because, like, Mm -hmm. they weren't all bandaged together. They were all trying to do their own thing to solve the issue, which obviously proved to not work so i think that played a big role into the into, into the development of the characters mm-hmm. the avengers were not assembled mm-hmm. which becomes significant later for sure oh yeah but anyway uh basically they have that kind of pep talk of well let's just go after sandals we mm-hmm. got the signature that came out of like oh he used the stones and literally captain marvel we saw that kind of clip from trailers and stuff of her just being like, okay, let's kill him. And they're like, okay, let's get that son of a bitch. And I think that's when you see the Avengers tag. Yeah, I think so. Of like Endgame. So that, and I expected that to come around the 30 minute mark. And that was like, it ended up being the five or eight minute mark. Exactly. It was way earlier than I expected. Mm-hmm. Which also bears the idea of like, oh, well, this isn't gonna go well, is it? But to my surprise, it kind of does. I was expecting, yeah, so <laughs> are we ready to talk about what happens on his farm? Yes. Okay, so uh, they get on the ship, the Guardians of the Galaxy ship, and then they head over to uh, Thanos' farm. And you just see Thanos, it's straight out of the comics, just kind of collecting fruit, putting them in the bag. He's... <laughs> War Machine had the perfect line of, oh great, Thanos has a retirement plan. Because that's what it really feels like. Yeah. And like, to be completely honest, I didn't expect this entire scene this early in the movie. I know. That was the biggest shock for me. Well, maybe the second biggest shock. Because Thanos, he's very at peace. And that peace is immediately disrupted. I think Captain Marvel just flying in. Yeah, Captain Marvel just flies in and knocks. Hulk him. bursts out from the floor in the Hulkbuster armor, grabs his arm, and they all kind of pull him apart. And Thor just straight up cuts his arm off. It was something people speculated, like, oh, why didn't they do that? And now they fucking did. Uh, cut off his arm, but you get the reveal of the stones being gone. Which, and, and then, yeah, then he does what he sh- wishes he would have done. In Infinity War. Yeah, although it's that thing of, like, now, it's really just out of revenge. It doesn't serve a purpose. Yeah, it's he out of spite. he cuts off the head, it's out of spite. Because now the stones are gone. Exactly. And that was probably the biggest surprise that I didn't expect. That yeah, the, exactly. stone, the stones were just gone. They're destroyed. That, that he used them to destroy themselves. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was... That's like the first big crazy moment, in my opinion, of the film. Well, and, and then after that, we just cut back to. I believe the next part's five years, correct? Oh, yeah, just yeah, five years later. Which I knew there'd be a time jump based on just uh, Black Widow's hair. Yeah. yeah. That I, I didn't think it would be five years, I thought it'd be like one year. A year and a half, maybe. They went all out and did a five-year time gap. Well, and the reality is, is whatever number they put there, they they could have easily put three years. They easily could have put one year and ha- still had the same stuff that happened, and it wouldn't have made any difference. So I think what the 
five years, I think it just made it kind of more impactful with showing how it affected people. Yeah, and the fact that, like, we're used to the Avengers having, like, here's a problem, we're going to solve it. Like, back to back. This was, we had a problem, and we can't we fix can't it. We can't solve it, it, yeah. To the point where, like, you think maybe a year would go by, and by that point, they're like, you know what, we got it, we'll fix it. But five years is kind of that, it's over, you know? Exactly. And we just see, like, the world as a whole is just still trying to move on. Cap is guiding the kind of group sessions uh, for people who are just trying to get over stuff. We got a nice cameo in that yep. scene. Yep. And you just kind of see where all the Avengers are. I mean, Captain Marvel's going around the galaxy trying to... Just do whatever she can to help, really. She's, like, basically the galaxy police. Like, she's just Yeah, doing for sure. Uh, and she has the comic book haircut, which I thought was a nice touch to keep secret as well. We didn't see that in any of the promo stuff. Exactly. Uh, but, like, yeah, Scarlet, or not, Scarlet Johansson playing Black Widow... Uh, I always want to say Scarlet Witch when I think of her name, just because Scarlet Johansson. But anyway, yeah. Black Witch or Black Widow, I combined it right there. Black mm-hmm. Widow is basically trying to keep organize and keep everything together so that the Avengers have kind of a role, but they, they can't undo a snap. So yeah, their work is really limited. But she's basically, and you kind of get the like the feeling and you kind of get the image that she's going through like a mental breakdown essentially yeah far more than i anticipated which yeah. sets up really well something that happens later on just her mental state in the scene exactly she's broken like every little detail just seems it feels so right to me mm-hmm. yeah definitely but anyway so um we get the kind of word of Ronin, which, oh my god, when that happens, that's awesome. But that little hint of, like, Hawkeye's going around just straight up killing baddies, like, mm-hmm. exactly. murdering them. Uh, but Cap shows up, they have kind of a really nice sentimental scene that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, it's but basically scene, just trying to get everybody back together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that idea of kind of coping, really. The fact mm-hmm. that they're both so broken. Exactly. And just trying to do their best, but uh, that scene kind of ends with them seeing the TV monitor of Ant-Man being like, hey guys, oh, we totally forgot, yeah. Ant-Man. No, yeah, we forgot, yeah, we forgot, okay. So backing up just a smidgy bit, uh, a rat basically lets Ant-Man out of the van and he's back, but for him, while well, it's been five years, it felt like five minutes, which then and, sets up the whole time stuff. Yeah, and the interesting thing is that we... We get that shot of Ant Man at the at the at the front gate in the trailer, but I didn't even really put it together on like how he could get back. And in the moment of seeing like that shot from the trailer, you don't really kind of put it together on how like what he's what his purpose is. And I feel that he plays such a big role, like such a bigger role than he was initially thought to have played. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it does. Which, uh, the part I really liked was him, first off, he goes to kind of the cemetery to be like, oh, please tell me my daughter didn't get uh, dusted away, and sees that his name's on there first. Yeah. But then he goes to his daughter's, and just mm-hmm. seeing her older, just a full-on like teenager, realizing she's gone five years thinking her dad is dead. Exactly. That scene was so damn impactful. Mm-hmm. It, it reminded me of Interstellar, the scene where Matthew McConaughey's character is looking at, you know, his daughter aging years before his eyes on the little video screen. And just the idea of, like, you weren't there to watch her grow up. Yeah. But the scene is very nice and very emotional, but it does lead to then Scott Lang showing up at the Avengers base to be like, hey, guys, I have an idea. And then, and then, like, there's, like, a sense of disbelief, and that's why I can't remember who says it, but I was like, oh, how old is this recording? Mm-hmm. Which, and then, obviously, they realize it's not, and they let him in, and he kind of, he kind of lays out his idea of what he wants to do. Yeah, which leads to, in my opinion, one of my favorite reveals that I did not predict happening from this film, which is Morgan, Tony's daughter. <sighs> I can't tell you 
the sounds the audience made sitting in that theater when you see Tony walk up to a little house and then uh-huh. a little girl comes out saying daddy it's like ah oh. exactly that she she's probably my favorite aspect of the film just yeah, what she does after, for Tony's character and after cuz that yeah so uh he shows up they discuss like what he want to do and they go to Tony's house essentially to try and mm-hmm. get him on board and get his his technological help, essentially. Yeah, yeah. And that scene was, it was so great to see. And again, it sets up something at the end of the film. Exactly. But it just, looking back from the first Iron Man to now, it just seeing Tony in that spot, it's like, that's it. Like, it's really fitting, especially for this film. Mm-hmm. And then that I keep on thinking back to that part of Infinity War where Tony's talking about the dream he had where he and Pepper were having a kid. Mm-hmm. And just then in the following film, ah, uh, and that alone justifies the five years. Exactly. Because that's feasible for them getting married. Getting, getting married, pregnant. having, a, you know, yeah, I mean, getting married, then obviously the nine months to have the kid, and then the kid mm-hmm. obviously needs to be old enough to be a, a viable character in the film. Yeah, and boy was she like. Yes, she was. God, just everything she did for Tony's character, and just like for such a small character to have that big of an impact in terms mm-hmm. of the film and the story. Just like her screen time wasn't as that much, but when she was on, you knew it was something to look out for. Yeah, yeah, like. Whew. But anyway, um, Tony they just show up. Yeah, they show up. Tony basically says, "I appreciate. It was nice seeing you guys, but no, essentially." Yeah, which makes sense in all honesty because he has everything he could have wanted. Of course, because he didn't lose any. He, I mean, he lost uh, Holland, but that was about yeah. it. Yeah. So, and the fact that he did lose Spider Man, who was kind of a son to him, but in return he. You know, married Gained Pepper and has his own yeah. kid. He has a family. He's retired. He's not Iron Man. And exactly. just like, it makes sense. Of course, he'd want Spider Man to come back, but he doesn't want to jeopardize everything he's gained. Well, not yet, anyway. But yeah. So then so. they have to go to the next person that might be able to help, which, which I thought was <laughs> <laughs> interesting for sure. I was expecting that to be a moment where that happens. But anyway, what we're referring to is the Bruce Banner Hulk, which I knew was going to be a thing in this movie, and it's also the natural progression progression from Ragnarok. But it's like, I thought there'd be a moment where you would see their conversation, but the first thing you see Hulk in, (laughs) (laughs) he's just like, oh yeah, I've been this way for a while. It's just the, the mind of Bruce Banner in the body of the Hulk. Exactly. Like, and it's like, a, yeah, the combination. Like, you combine some of the features from Banner into the Hulk, and... Because this, this is the whole restaurant scene, right? Yep, with the kids trying to take oh, his picture. Oh, that was so funny. And then yeah. Ant-Man, he's like... like, And that's something to note with this scene it's in particular. I feel like this was, like, one of the first scenes where the humor really starts to come out in the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I th- definitely. I think... The humor was just the right amount. I don't think it was overdone, but I think mm-hmm. there was just enough. Yeah, they did a good job of balancing it because after Infinity War, of course, this film, they had to take it a little bit more seriously because of the stakes. Yeah. But it is still a Marvel movie, so they did have to have humor. So I thought they balanced that out very well. Exactly. And, like, the whole when the kids leave and he dabs and all of that. Yeah. And I just thought overall, this, this first act, Ant-Man... What I found interesting was he was basically the audience. He, they did a good job of making him kind of that, like, he thought he was this way in Civil War and some of the other movies, but like the, hey, I'm just here, I'm new here, exposit mm-hmm. to me. Exactly. So that gave him a really good purpose going into the second act. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so. So, uh, Banner Hulk agrees to mm-hmm. help them in any way he can. Yep, and they decide to try and get a team together, which I don't remember which happened first. Was New Asgard first or was Ronin? It doesn't really matter which we talk about first, I guess, but... Yeah, I think it was New Asgard, though. 
okay. thing. So anyway, we go to New Asgard, which was a very nice touch in terms of, you know, from Ragnarok where Odin died, uh, to mm-hmm. now kind of see that's where Asgard is on Earth, uh, which was just really cool. But then... <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Okay, so I have a singular nitpick, really, with Endgame. Uh, it, it, it had a really funny joke that should not have gone on for as long as it did, and that was the Thor fat suit. Oh, yeah. I, I thought that scene in New Asgard where they found Thor was fucking hilarious. The Fortnite part might not age well, but that was also really funny. And just no, for see, the time being, I think... Yeah, I mean, if someone watches it ten years from now, it's not. That's gonna be completely irrelevant. It's not gonna have. Yeah. And, and like him talking but, on the mic was was just a touch on top. I feel. Yeah, it was it was good humor, and I it felt very Ragnarok to me that whole scene. Exactly. Uh, especially what, which makes sense because Taika Waititi was there on the day, so he could bring that kind of energy. But when I think it's kind of interesting when uh, they get there and they talk to Valkyrie. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like, N- no, uh, he w- doesn't want to talk to anybody. And like, they go in there and he's like super pumped to see them. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of interesting to note as well. Yeah, it's true. That's a really interesting point. I didn't even think about that, but like, cause like I first, I thought they were going to enter the house and cause that's when they enter the house and he asked if it was the cable guy, but I thought he was going to, they were going to enter the house and he was going to like flip out on him. It was a very nice expectation subversion as well, just by setting you up to think he was going to be, you know, sore that we've last seen him just really angry. In fact, it's the polar opposite. It's fat, jolly sore. Yeah, and then and then you get the shot of him using his hammer to open beers and all of that, which all of that slowly transitions and plays into mm-hmm. how they convince him to come with There's them. There's on the ship. And, yeah, the next thing you know... Um, yeah. I can't remember exactly where it is, but where do we? I think we might have passed it, but the Neymar reference. Oh, I don't think I caught that. So, because there was a line about the earthquake in the ocean. Oh, that's right. So oh, that, I didn't even put that together in the Neymar reference. Yeah. So that makes that, me wonder. That's a really good. I'm glad you caught that. I totally didn't catch that. Yeah, because that was with the Black Widow cap scene. Uh, cause Black Widow was on the conference call with everybody. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, that was a good catch. I didn't catch that. That's, that's something that we can look out for. I don't think mm-hmm. it's, there's not much to talk about it, but I think, I yeah. think we might see something. Well, and I'm also, that's, I'm pretty sure at least the second Namor reference we've gotten though in the MCU, cause we got the map that listed a location, mm-hmm. uh, in the ocean. So... I yeah. think that's definitely Kevin Feige saying, I want to get it's to Namor more and I'm yeah. planning on it soon. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, it's just a teaser. It's like, it's coming. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. But which yeah, really so, cool. yeah, so then we go to Ronan. Yes, which that scene, that made me so happy because that scene was, A, shot very well. And mm-hmm. that was, I was worried that they, it would, the movie would just have it be Hawkeye in a new costume and that's it. But no, that was straight up Hawkeye's Ronan. Uh-huh. Of him just being a badass and straight up murdering people. Like, I have yeah. some comics, I believe they're New Avengers comics, that have Ronan in them. And I thought Ronan was awesome in that. I was like, I really hope they deliver. And boy, did they with that scene. And then the whole part where he, like, takes off his hood and takes off the mask and, like, just that mm-hmm. suspense building up. And also, it's also worth, worth pointing out, this film was also a little bit more brutal in some areas that I saw. Like, Sandals getting his head chopped off, his arm, Ronan stabbing the guy. Like yeah, there was a lot more implied violence. Yeah, but it's more than I think we've gotten really. Aside from maybe some of the Wakanda fight in Infinity War. Like, That's true. Yeah. Comparatively to the MCU, this film felt like they're brutal taking chances. In some aspects. Yeah, which well, I'm also glad it's at that more kind of realistic level of the Avengers kill people. Well, and you have to realize, and you have to realize, like, obviously they want to attract the younger audiences as well. But th- I mean, this this whole saga has been going on for ten years. So people who started watching when ten years ago, they're grown up now. Like, yeah, 
I feel that's important to know, and I think that they're kind of developing the film as the audience develops as well. It's a fair point. But yeah, so... So... Ronan was brutal, but then I also do like that kind of scene of uh, Black Widow and Ronan. They kind of have that moment. And again, it also sets up something on War Mirror. Yep. Of just kind of their relationship. Which um, we can get to later, yeah. Yeah, so... Basically, are we now at the point where all the Avengers are back at the base? I think so. I think they have the team assembled, and I think mm -hmm. they kind of start brainstorming at that point. Yeah, and this is where my memory gets a little bit foggier on what happens. Yeah, scene I mean, like the, the order of events is a little bit, because, I mean, we do get a lot mm -hmm. of jumps, which in the moment yeah. of, like, watching the film, it works really well, and, and there's no issue with it, but, like, when you mm -hmm. try and talk about it, like, it's hard to recall what comes in order. Yeah, because I, like... Thinking back, the things that I know we still have to hit on is the uh, Iron Man solving the quantum time travel scenario. Well, yeah, so we can go even go a little bit before in that scene. So Tony's washing the dishes, and he sprays the plate wrong, and water just goes everywhere. Um, and then he starts wiping stuff off, and what, it was like a half cabinet that he had the picture in or something like yeah. that. And he reaches in and uh, has the picture of him and Holland mm -hmm. and that right there like that moment because that was that dragged on for a little bit like him looking at the picture mm -hmm. I felt like I, it was dragged on but in an appropriate way yeah because he has a daughter now so he hasn't really thought about Peter as a son in a while especially yeah. since it's been those five years he hasn't forgotten per se but it's just not on his mind exactly. whereas that picture I feel like brought it to the forefront and made it fresh again and he's like, wow, I need to do something about this, essentially. And so I think then we, he, we just get him cut, cut to the basement where mm -hmm. he's working on it. Yeah, so that his, moment. <laughs> his face when he, like, he sees the like, successful thing or whatever it is, mm -hmm. that face is just so priceless. Yeah, and it just fights the shit with, <laughs> then, with a very nice joke with the daughter. <laughs> and she says it, and he's like, oh, no, that's mommy's word. And then she's, he says it again. <laughs> but that whole scene, I yeah, don't know. And then he puts her up to bed, and we get the uh, I love you times 3,000 yes. moment. Which, at, at the time, it doesn't seem that significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I just thought of it as like that joke that he comes and tells Pepper later on. The, by the way, not that it's a competition, but she loved me. Times yeah. 3,000. I think you're in the mid-600s. Yeah, exactly. So what's next? So so I think then we kind of get the whole everybody goes on their own way thing, and then we kind of get the three different stories at once. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which, that was one of the things I covered in my theory prediction that I thought they would do. They did it differently than I expected, because I thought it would be like... You know, maybe they split up, but only one group would be time traveling kind of thing. But they went to three different locations, and it was cutting back between that, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Just the 2012 so New the York. <sighs> yeah, so we get the New York first. Mm -hmm. Which I think was kind of significant, because drop, they drop in, and all the first thing you really see is Hulk smashing things. Yeah, well, and that's uh, the 360 of the Avengers, that classic shot. Oh, yeah. But, which I felt it was appropriate. But yeah, so then you got the team, which it was really cool to see Ant-Man in New York because in the comics he was a classic Avenger, so to be there when the first Avengers movie took place was kind of nice for me. Yeah. But anyway, so you got him. Yeah, Hulk had that funny moment of like, oh, I was so <laughs> savage back then. Man. And then they, they're like, oh, you should go try smashing stuff. And he's <laughs> like, okay. And he tries to go smash and it's just like, it doesn't feel like he doesn't yeah. feel like it's it Bruce really. Banner impersonating the whole mind. Yeah, but yeah, and I thought it was an interesting choice to have Bruce Banner go after the uh, Time Stone. Definitely, because for the biggest kind of muscle on the team to have to essentially try and get the stone by talking, which luckily he yeah. had the mind of Bruce Banner. Uh huh. But. And I, and that whole scene, that whole encounter was really interestingly done, I feel. Yeah, because, I mean, you expect, you know, with, as Ant-Man phrased it, the time heist, 
it to be them doing action stuff, heisting and all that. That was him literally having to charisma and convince her to let him Well, and it. logic. Yeah. And it, and it ultimately ends up being him talking about uh, Doctor Strange mm-hmm. and giving up the stone in the first place. Which is... And that whole important. scene where she pulls the body towards her like and it puts him back in it mm-hmm. like that was such an interesting like interesting touch i feel yeah well the line that i think was really cool about that part was when she said that Stephen strange is the best of all of us the fact like yeah so the fact that he did that was enough insurance for her to be like okay i'm gonna give it to you because obviously he had the well, and that's and that's why banner was like well maybe he did it for a reason mm-hmm. so yeah so he gets a stone, and that's kind of mm-hmm. the end we see from his sign. And then we we don't get the we don't get the other part of New York right away. I think we cut somewhere else because mm-hmm. there's the uh, Vormir stuff. We got the uh, oh yeah the Guardians of the Galaxy opening part, um, mm-hmm. and then the other. What's the fourth one? Uh Oh, it's the, uh Dark uh the deep the elves. This what's the yeah. second Thor movie called? That's how forgettable the second Thor movie was. But <laughs> we also got that. Uh, that was the fourth one. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, so which do you want to talk about first? Because I figure we can just uh, run through. It's up to you. Okay, let's just finish New York while we're at it. So because that's going to lead into another location anyway. Uh, yeah. So, basically, we get the whole part from uh, a continuation, really, from the first Avengers, which I thought was really cool to see, because then we got the uh, crossbones and the secretary showing up, which we didn't know were a part of it back then. So, we got that nice mm-hmm. Cat Hill Hydra line. Oh, yeah, that was... <laughs> uh, and they just, they just the let them take it which was awesome. Yeah. Because I was expecting them to reenact the fight from Winter Soldier, but I think it was even more interesting to have Cap have to say the words Hail Hydra after all that he's been through. Like, that's on a much smaller level, of course, part of that, like, whatever it takes. Yeah, exactly. But he gets it and then encounters the other version of him who thinks that Loki is there with it. Yeah, because, yeah. And we had an awesome Cap versus Cap fight. Exactly. And we get to see plenty of America's ass. Yep. <laughs> Which I think was a nice Yeah, time. that was probably one of my favorite jokes of the film. You like recurring jokes. Yeah, because, I mean, they said it twice. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it's like the language line from Age of Ultron. Yeah, so then the scepter falls down. Mm-hmm. During that fight, that whole encounter. Yep. And Cap wins by um, referencing Bucky. Yeah. So. And then... Well, and then here's something that I want to pick your brain about. So while that's all going on, uh, Tony and Ant-Man are trying to get the Time Stone. Uh, and exactly. they get so close to it, and then Hulk, who had to take the fucking stairs, which was also hilarious, just knocks yeah. away the briefcase... Letting the test. Well, yeah, because Ant Man goes into older or past Tony and causes the Mm -hmm. heart attack essentially. Yeah. Um, But then in all the commotion, Loki takes the Tesseract and dips. Yeah, yeah, because after Hulk hits or Hulk smashes open the door, knocks future Tony down. And the briefcase opens, and the Tesseract goes, like, it coincidentally goes right by Loki's feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, like you said, he just dips out of so it. So here's my question with that. Mm-hmm. Is that stuff canon in the current timeline now? Because they go back in the past next and basically get it in the, I want to say, 70s. But... Mm-hmm. There's when Cap later in the film goes back to replace everything. He can't. Can he undo that, or is it canon now that after the events of the first Avengers, Loki escapes? And if so, that changes Thor two. And how does that affect Loki's current status? That's a good point. I never thought of that. 
Because like that's a, that's a huge moment of Loki. He full on escapes. The Avengers at that point could not track down Loki to wherever he just escaped to. Yeah. So unless Cap using Thor's hammer, which, yeah, when he's replacing all the gems, <laughs> tries to fix that, I don't, I don't know what that means because I'm pretty sure that timeline has to still be canon because Ant Man took the Mind Stone back with him. So if they yeah. undid that, they'd also undo the Mind Stone. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So I just thought I don't know. That That's really interesting. interesting. That could play a mm. big point of Loki now being alive. Exactly. We'll have to so, see. Yeah. Anyway, so they have it. They have it set up where I think it could go either which way. Which I think was the point. They wanted that to be ambiguous. Yeah. They wanted that door to be open. Mm. Especially with the new Loki so, yeah. show. But anyway, uh, let's kind of breathe through the next kind of locations because we have then the yeah we still have a lot to we have go, a so. lot to go through. So we have basically the uh, going back to the camp that Captain America trained at, where Tony gets to meet his dad basically and have mm-hmm. a great scene with him where they're kind of at the same points of their lives, both have a kid, and Tony can kind of finally see where his dad's coming from with a lot of that stuff. Yeah, and like and that connection like that final scene, like after his dad drives away and you see like him just smile. Yeah. Like that that was a heartwarming moment. And then kind of to counter that, Cap sees Peggy, which if I have to guess on like the Cap going back in time and becoming old part of the film is that he does the Tesseract last and just basically changes it so he doesn't leave that room, basically. And that's where he goes to Peggy. Yeah, basically. So he meets Peggy in that point in time. Mm -hmm. And basically just says, like, hey, let's be together, but we have to keep it a secret because in continuity, I'm still frozen in ice. Yeah, because we see that that whole dancing scene at the mm -hmm. end, which I think... One of my favorite shots. Exactly. But so yeah, let's just keep going yeah. on. To the... So then we have the uh, Vormir stuff with uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye, which is I Hawkeye, was not yeah. expecting at all. That whole scene there. Not at all. And it was one of the more powerful scenes of the film. Well, and when when they went back there, like obviously when they, I knew they were trying to get the Soul Stone, you you were think you remember back to Infinity mm-hmm. War and you remember that Thanos sacrificed his daughter. So, I mean, it was, it was something that was in the back of my mind, but I didn't know exactly how it was going to go down. Yeah, and the fact that they were both so willing to sacrifice their own lives. And they were fighting to die, essentially. Like, I'll be the one, I'm sacrificing myself for you. Which I think it speaks more to that idea of, the, of love than Thanos throwing his daughter off. Because it's that kind of mutual thing of they love the other person so much that they want to die so that person can live. Can live to, mm-hmm. to, to continue in the life that they're, hope, that they're trying to regain. Yes, which at least this is my interpretation. I could be incorrect. I also find it interesting that in both cases where someone had to be sacrificed out of love for the soul stone, neither of those felt like, you know, relationship romantic love it was the love between father towards the daughter and then the love of two, two lifelong friends. friends yeah so i just found that also being interesting and neat thing but yeah then you get the moment of black widow dying yeah and so because yeah you get that she's like you get that scene for a second where they're hanging off the cliff mm. and he like has control of her yeah and like basically, like she's like begging for him to kill her, essentially. Mm. Yeah, and it's and she and she just kicks off the wall and breaks the grip, and she just goes down. Yeah, which was a great moment for her character, after seeing like the impact that Infinity War had on her at the beginning of the film. In that moment, I was like, it's got to be her. And then also, what it does for Clint, the fact that now he's lost his family and his closest friend. Is like, oh, that's so brutal. Exactly. But, and, like, he, even when he has a soul stone... Well, and you get that scene of her body on the ground, yeah. and it stays on that for, like, a good ten mm-hmm. seconds, I want to say. Yeah. And you just see her splattered on the ground, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then also that moment of, even when Clint gets the soul stone, it just, he has that expression of he almost doesn't want it. When he just kind of splashes like in the water. Thing. But he knows... Well, and, like... And when they and when he goes back, because I think right at that moment is when they all transport back. Mm. So, because I think that was the yeah, last it is. of the scenes. Yeah, right, it is. But 
so like you get that once they transport back he has like that guilty conscience because of what he knows what happened yeah but anyway then you have the whole Thor part which is at first still kind of comedic because it's that fat Thor but he has a really nice moment with, moment with his mother mother that yeah. was nice and then Natalie Portman came back I did not expect that yeah for her to reprise her role as Jane uh, but it's it's mm-hmm. really just kind of funny of Rocket having to go in and take the stone and just run out and run like, get the rabbit! I'm a raccoon, fuck. Like, yeah. That was, it was a nice moment with Sora that he actually, here's another thing that I don't know how it messes with the timeline. He takes back Molnir and takes that with him. That's true. So in my brain, I see that as when Cap went to go reset everything, that's why he brought Molnir to give it back to that version of Thor. But I don't know how he'd get to Asgard to do that. That's true. So I don't know. But anyway, um, so there's that, that scene, which was very nice. Uh, we get the scene from Guardians, which I love the moment where it's literally shot for shot, kind of the beginning of Guardians. But then you cut away and you don't hear the music. And you just hear Star-Lord kind of singing it and War mm-hmm. Machine and Nebula watching. Yeah. But the real impactful part of that scene is the Nebula to Nebula transmission where that period of Thanos oh, yeah. realizes what's going on and the fact that in one timeline he wins and these people are trying to stop him. Exactly. So we get the whole Nebula swap uh, that happened at that point which leads to Thanos. Which was, yeah, getting, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I really like that Nebula felt important in this movie because this is the first time I felt like she had important stuff to do with the film. Well, yeah, there was two roles, I feel. Mm -hmm. But, like, Guardians, I don't think she got a lot of character time. Guardians of the Galaxy 2, she got an okay amount, but still not a lot. Uh, Mm -hmm. Infinity War was very little. This movie, I felt like, okay, this Nebula was a part of it. Well, and she was a part in developing other characters as well. Mm -hmm. And I think the same goes to War Machine, in my opinion, because in the past, I don't think we've really gotten much War Machine since Iron Man 3. And then with this movie, he's a main character. So, anyway, uh, that leads, though, to they all get back, and like you said, uh, Clint's hit by it, and they're like, wait, where's Natasha? And then it hits mm-hmm. them. Exactly. Uh, so then, I think after that, we get to, uh, to the scene where you see Tony putting the getting the stones all prepared to be put into this ga- into the gauntlet that he made essentially yeah which i think again like that scene in particular just kind of shows like how powerful like and how powerful and how like smart and capable that tony is mm-hmm, definitely the fact that he made something that could harness the power of the stones itself. yeah all the stones like yeah like one of them is already like saying a lot but mm-hmm. But yeah, then Hulk basically he puts on the gauntlet because he's the only one that can survive it really. Mm -hmm. And he snaps everyone back, which is something that I actually didn't expect the snap to be dual sided, but I like that interpretation. Like the undoing of what was done essentially. Yeah, because at least. Well, it's like what, like in my interpretation, it's like whatever he's think, like he like thinks of something that he wants to do with the snap, and then he Mm -hmm. snaps. Like I don't think. The snap is explicitly to only wipe half the population. I think that since that's what was on Thanos' <clears throat> like, that was Th- Thanos's goal. Exactly. I think that's kind of how it works. Which was not it's like my a, initial interpretation, but it makes sense. It's like a fl- like a flip of a lever of like something turning on. Or mm-hmm. Yeah, just the motion of the snap uses all the stones. Exactly. But anyway. And for a split moment, I thought that that killed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he got messed up by the power yeah. of the Infinity Stones. His arm, his side of his face. Which I'll be curious to see what that does for the Hulk going forward in movies. Mm-hmm. Is he always going to have a messed up arm now? Yeah. So, anyway, but uh, at the same time, though, Nebula pulls and switches yeah. and brings Thanos' entire ship to modern Yeah, time. <laughs> which is crazy. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so... I, and, and then, then are we at yeah, the Thanos attack? Yeah, bas- so because basically, so after Hulk, Banner, whatever, snaps his fingers, 
Uh, then I think it's Ant-Man. He walks out into, like, that, where, like, that window is. Yeah. And then that's, yeah, that's when you see the ship, or that's when the ship goes up and he, they, it starts firing and that's when he gets Which I totally down. thought that Ant-Man died in that moment, if I'm being totally honest. Because it was just he a nice moment. Have. It was like a direct hit, too. Yeah. Which I think <laughs> you see if you, I mean, I assume if you go frame by frame, he shrinks in that moment. You kind of can see Oh, no, he, he does. So he does. I feel like that's what he protects does, him, yeah. but still it's like. Well, because like, because later on in that scene, you see him. Like, because he's in a, like, he's super tiny in a little piece, next to a piece of dirt, so. Yeah. But anyway, but yeah. so. I feel like you should have Thanos totally tears apart the Avengers space. Like, levels he, it. He creates, like, three different layers underground. Mm-hmm. Which, the it. whole War Machine rocket, they kind of end up on the bottom layer. And it's actually kind of a nice comic book reference of Hulk's literally holding up that layer. Of all exactly. the Earth on top of them, which I believe is a direct comic book nod to Hulk. I think he's holding up, like, a mountain or something. Yeah. But that was a cool moment. Ant-Man comes to Ant-Man, the rescue. Ant-Man, yeah. Um, yeah, like, you see Ant-Man coming over there, and then it just cuts away. It's so, like, you know what's going to happen, but it's mm-hmm. like it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, and then uh, Sandos tells Nebula to go get the gauntlet, which is this Hawkeye, and he's just running from the... Um, I yeah. forget what they're called, but Thanos is minions, basically. Yeah, exactly. He gets away from them. Yeah, and a moment that I actually want to kind of briefly t- uh, touch on, but I want to make sure we touch on, is Nebula and uh, Gamora encounter Nebula, which is a mm-hmm. very confusing sentence. But yeah, Nebula exactly. ends up shooting herself from the past. Mm-hmm. So my question is, how is she alive? Is yeah, does that kill her? Mm-hmm. That, yeah, because what I expected to happen is as soon as that nebula got shot, you'd see the other nebula fall to the ground. It would be Where that it was like a of, sacrifice. Yeah, that she sacrificed herself because the other version was gonna shoot Gamora. I feel like that would have been if they wanted a way out of Nebula's character. I think that's how they would have done it. But so clearly, they have a purpose for her. They have a purpose for her, which will be interesting to see. Especially because James Gunn wrote the script for. Uh, Guardian 3 before Infinity War came out, I'm pretty sure. So it's like, yeah, so that's probably what it has to do with. Yeah, but anyway, uh, just wanted to kind of bring up that because yeah, I that's... found that interesting. But the next big part, which is a huge part, is the main three Avengers. You got Thor, Cap, and Iron Man see Thanos, and they're like, he doesn't have the stones. Now's our opportunity. Yeah, let's go. And that starts probably my favorite fight from the entire MCU. Yeah, that like that's like that's the fight scene of the century. I feel. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, and then it's just that how it starts there is great mm-hmm. of just seeing the three of them versus Thanos, all their peak and Thor when he has Mjolnir and Stormbreaker and he's dual wielding them. Yeah, it's so cool. Again, well, and even then they're getting they're getting their butts kicked. Yeah, they are, which is saying something because that's before Thanos had. A single stone. Yeah, that like that's that's his raw power. Yeah, which I just thought was crazy. Um, but I think out of all things, like I was really impressed with how well Cap managed. But then the really the huge moment is when oh, yeah. uh, Thanos is pushing Stormbreaker into Thanos's chest, kind of like what happened in or Infinity into, War. Uh, in or sorry, Cap's yeah, chest? into a uh, source. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pushing Stormbreaker into Thor's chest, kind of like what happened in Infinity War. And then you just see Mjolnir come by and just whoosh, whiz past. Uh, and mm-hmm. knocks Thanos away. And then it flies back and Cap catches it. Mm-hmm. Which it was a theory that I kind of got from Age of Ultron of the Cap being like, it, from that little jiggle, he, he's probably worthy, but just doesn't want to show off and take that away from Thor. And that was just kind of confirmation of that theory of Cap being worthy. Yeah. And that, it was, I didn't know I wanted that so bad of Cap having Mjolnir in a shield fighting Thanos. And that was yeah. probably, that was incredible as a Cap fan. Exactly. But, is there so, anything else with this fight we want to touch on before the on, uh-huh. on your left moment? I mean, I, I, that whole Avengers Assemble moment. Yeah. 
Oh, are we? Wait, which part? We're just talking before about before the on on your left in portal open. Oh, okay. No, you know, then no. Okay. As far as the Thanos fight, no. There's not much going yeah. other than that. So, anyway, what it looks like they're being literally Thanos breaks apart Cap's shield to where there's just a tiny piece of it left. It's like it's like probably a a third of it by now. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Cap, he just does that, getting back up, I'm not going down, I can do this all day, kind of a stance. And then you hear on the comm, Falcon say, on your left, and then the mm-hmm. portal opens up. In that moment, I think <laughs> I cried tears of joy, just seeing everyone. Everybody like, pile up. When they said Infinity War was the biggest crossover event ever, Endgame immediately wound up it. This was even bigger, in my opinion, than. Well, because you at first you see the one, the first portal, and then you just see all the other portals open up, and just everybody comes through. Yeah, and just everyone and I, from the. And MCU I think my fa- favorite side. character coming through, like the, my favorite entrance was Spider Man's entrance. Same, absolutely, absolutely. He just swings like you just see the web come through, and you just know it's happening, and it's just mm-hmm. like that shot was so well done. Yeah, but. You literally get everyone from the MCU there in that moment, and it's incredible. And then you get that, and then you get that wide shot of Thanos's army, and then all of like everybody mm-hmm. just. Yep. And then you get the famous line. Avengers assemble. assemble, and it all kicked off, and that was like. Oh, <laughs> that, that whole, whole scene, scene just felt so good. Mm-hmm. It was just so awesome, like. I don't even know if I can just talk about everything in it. So, like, what are the standouts for you of that part? Well, one of the biggest standouts is, I mean, it's towards the end of this of that whole fight scene. I mean, obviously, there's the fight. Everybody kind of slaughters everybody. Mm-hmm. And then and then it's the whole, you get that shot of all the women. Yep. I had a feeling that was what you are going to say. Yeah. That was so cool. Like, I like, got goosebumps. I, like there was like at first it was like just a couple and then just more and more showed up and then like as like at first I'm like oh it's just a couple and I was like maybe there's gonna be some men too and then it just slowly builds up and it's like literally every it's crazy it made me realize how many female superheroes Marvel has which was really cool to just see them well, all together and see how powerful they all are I think it's like the I think it's partly the quality thing too. Mm-hmm. I think it plays a big role in it. Yeah. And, like, I, I don't think I've ever been so happy to see Scarlet Witch. Because just, like, her vendetta against Thanos in that scene. Oh, uh, yeah. <sighs> was like well, and then you have, obviously, you have Captain Marvel leading it all. Mm-hmm. Because, undoubtedly, she's the strongest out of mm-hmm. all of them, I would say. Yeah. Scarlet Witch is the close second, though. Close but second, yeah. yeah. But like her line of after Thanos said like I don't know who you are, and she just says you will. Ah, uh, that was she was awesome in that scene. Exactly. Especially. But yeah, it's like that. You're right. I think that was cool. And then the moment of uh, Hawkeye getting out of the tunnel and being like, I gotta get it where, and Black Panther being like, give me the gauntlet, and just a passing off of oh, the gauntlet. Oh, the passing. And then, yeah. So then I think we're... No, I, th- I think, uh, wasn't it... Oh, no, because then uh, Peter Parker... Or, yeah, Peter takes it from... Mm-hmm. After Black Panther. Black and then Panther. Goes to and then, Marvel. yeah, then he's just getting slaughtered. And then <laughs> the that whole... Mode. that No, and then that and then that moment between uh, him and Captain Marvel where he's like, Hi, I'm Peter Parker. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Oh, nice to meet you, Peter Parker. Do you have something for me? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that was, like, in the moment, because that, like, before that, you just have, like, straight, like, three minutes of just action. And so I think that yeah. brief moment of, like, relief was impactful. Yeah. Especially after Captain Marvel's entrance, just destroying the ship. Exactly. But, yeah, and then I think we're at the point then... of, uh, basically, Thanos, he gets the gauntlet. Yeah. And... You see he, the look he puts between, it on. He gets the gauntlet, he puts it on, and you see the look between Doctor Strange and Iron and Man Tony. with yeah. the one. Mm-hmm. Where Tony knows exactly what has to be done. He jumps on Thanos' back, and without Thanos realizing it, takes the stones. And you have that great line delivery of Thanos saying, I am inevitable. And then he looks at the gauntlet after snapping and nothing happening, seeing the stones are gone. 
and Iron Man just holds up his arm. And, and you, yeah. they all kind of circle around his gauntlet and then go in. And, and it was says, kind of interesting to notice, note really quick that it's the first time we see like the stones in something like so small. Yeah, which I think was definitely part of Iron Man's contingency plan. Exactly. Of just like having the big obvious gauntlet, but then making a very subtle kind of thing within his normal gauntlet. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so the other yeah, moment where Tony just simply says, "I am Iron Man," which mm-hmm. that hit me so hard, and then the snap happens. Thanos and all of his people get dusted, and then after a moment, Tony just dies of his injuries, and oh, yeah, it hits really hard. Mm-hmm. And then so, you have the funeral scene where you see them listening to do the last recording he made right before they do the quantum mm-hmm. traveling. Which and, I, mean, I was surprised they played that in front of Morgan at such a young age. But yeah. just seeing her there watching her dad just, oh. So after the whole funeral thing, then you also have the part of Cap going back in time to replace the stones. They try and bring him back, but he's not coming back. And then you look and you see the old man sitting on the bench. Oh, yeah. Which, that was probably one of the more rewarding parts of the ending up there with Iron Man's funeral and all that in terms of basically saying, I thought I'd take Tony's kind of advice and get a life. And the fact that he got to kind of have that life with Peggy. And and, and I was fully her. expecting going into this film, I was fully expecting Cap to die. Yeah, which I'll say it kind of... They did what I predicted in a totally different backwards way, because I thought it would be, it would end with Tony alive so that he can spend his life with Pepper, and Cap dying so he could be with Peggy. But it was the opposite for the same reasons. Exactly. Cap lived and got to be with Peggy. Iron Man died, but before he died, got to spend five years just living his normal life with Pepper and having a family. Exactly. So for me, that was... A great ending. And just that last shot of them dancing was the perfect shot for me as a cat fan. Exactly. But I guess, is there any other Endgame stuff you want to touch on before we call it a video? No. Just go see it and support and watch the epic conclusion. Yeah, because this this definitely feels like a final chapter. Like, I feel like from this point on, the MCU as a whole is going to be different because from Iron Man to Endgame, that is, that's the story. Exactly. So I think from this point on, it's going to be kind of just a new direction because like exactly. this 22 yeah. film saga is like one book, one story. Exactly. So I'll be very curious to see what the next story is. Yeah. Because they got a lot of seats to fill as well because Thor's going to the Guardians we don't really know what they're going to do with Hulk and Hawkeye, but then Cap and Iron Man, they're yeah, kind exactly. of gone. Falcon is going to be Cap after the passing on of the shield. Yeah, exactly. So. We'll see. I'm definitely going to be curious. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, for comment, and subscribe. Share this video with all your friends. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Stay classy. Later. Woo. Later.